Ocarinas may be easier to learn than many other instruments, but double, triple, and other multi-chamber ocarinas are where it gets tough for many new ocarinists. To help bridge that gap, today we'll break down six skills you can work on to improve your multi-chamber ocarina playing. Press that subscribe button like you're pressing one of the holes on your uh, multi-chamber ocarina, and let's get started. That was stupid, but do it anyways. The first skill we'll discuss is chamber isolation when you're playing the instrument. When you first get a multi-chamber ocarina and start blowing into it to play it, you will probably notice that you have air leaking from the chamber you're playing in into other chambers, like something like that, maybe less noticeable. This ain't your basic single chamber ocarina anymore. With a single chamber ocarina, you don't need to be particularly careful about your embouchure. If you blow into the ocarina even relatively badly, Sound happens and there's no leakage, no issues, no problem. However, with a multi-chamber ocarina, your embouchure can no longer be haphazard. A bad, unfocused embouchure means that you will leak your air into other chambers and make unintentional sound. You gotta narrow those lips. Get a narrower, more focused flow of air so you only blow into the chamber that you intend to. While I did play an example on a triple ocarina, this is easier on a double ocarina because there's only two holes for you to blow in. So you could be like on the edge and on the edge instead of having to play in the middle. But in any case, being able to blow your air in a focused way is the first and most important skill when it comes to playing any multi-chamber ocarina. You don't want to be like... Okay, well you ended up with a harmony, but you only wanted to play the first chamber and you ended up playing the second chamber too. Don't do that. Get those lips narrow like with a single chamber ocarina, you could basically just cover the hole, stick the mouthpiece into your mouth like. However, with a multi-chamber ocarina, you need to make your lips narrow first like that and then apply that to each chamber. So start with a ooh. Narrow lips. So getting this perfect does require a bit of experimentation. The main thing is focus on making the airstream coming out of your mouth more narrow. So instead of a broad, like with a single chamber ocarina, because that does work on a single chamber ocarina. Imagine that you're blowing into a needle, like something like that. Obviously, you're not doing that exact shape with your mouth when it applies to the ocarina itself, but you want the idea of blowing into a very narrow point as you blow into the ocarina so that you don't leak any air into the other chamber. Your goal is narrow, more focused airflow. Experiment with it and it mainly comes down to the shape of your lips. The next major skill to work on with multi-chamber ocarinas is chamber switching. However, we will break that down into two sub skills. The first of which is the mouth aspect to chamber switching on the mouthpieces. If you look at the mouthpiece of this triple ocarina, you'll see that there are three separate mouthpiece holes. A triple ocarina is literally three ocarinas glued together. So when you're switching chambers, you're going from one ocarina to another to another. Something that I noticed with new ocarinists when they get their first multi-chamber ocarinas is that they're moving their head instead of the ocarina. When you're chamber switching, you are moving the ocarina far more than you move your head. Obviously, your mouth and head have small micro adjustments to properly land on the holes, have the correct embouchure, things like that. But largely, you are primarily moving the ocarina itself and only the ocarina when it comes to your chamber switches. So for example, If you notice, my head was nearly entirely in place, other than small adjustments to have my embouchure land in the proper place. The ocarina itself is what was moving. Imagine it's sort of like you're playing the harmonica and you're moving it from side to side to play different notes. So.
That sounds a little gross, but you get the idea. You are moving this from side to side, not your head from side to side. So diving into the technicalities of the head and mouth part of switching chambers, it should be smooth. It can and should be smooth. Some people like to add a bit of lubricant, like some chapstick, but I'm not a huge fan of chapstick because it does leave behind a bit of residue on the mouthpiece of your ocarina. So as it comes to lubricating the mouth and mouthpiece side of the chamber switching, I either do nothing or literally just lick my lips a little bit to have them a little moist and a little bit more smooth. It sounds a bit gross, but you're putting your mouth on the instrument anyway, so it's all the same substance. And last, as it relates to your mouth and the mouthpiece of chamber switching, make sure you maintain your tight embouchure. Just because you can move the ocarina smoothly because you have some chapstick or licked lips does not mean your embouchure will remain tight. Have a tight embouchure without any leaked airflow. Experiment with it, get it right, work on it until it's automatic. I'm recording this video on a Friday night and I don't feel like going out, but you know, party time. But that does bring me to a little bit of an educational point. While it can be fun to get a little buzzed and play your ocarina, make sure you drink water so you don't have any beer or whatever in your mouth when you blow in because I think in some cases alcohol can mess with the interior of your ocarina. So make sure to drink some water if you take a sip of any type of alcohol and there's a chance you'll be playing your ocarina later. The rest will be a reward for when I finish recording. <laughs> But next up, we have the other aspect of chamber switching, which is your finger movement, primarily your right hand. Some multi-chamber ocarinas do make this easier than with others. For example, as you can see, all of the holes in each row for the Songbird Harmony Triple are perfectly lined up. Additionally, there's a bump between each chamber to help you mentally know which chamber that you're on with even less thought than just knowing. This is in contrast to other multi-chamber ocarinas like the Ocarina of Time Double where it's perfectly smooth from one chamber to the other in a straight line. And that's because you're maintaining the very smooth shape of the Ocarina of Time. That's just one ergonomic sacrifice that has to be made. The exact ergonomics of how an ocarina is designed when it comes to switching chambers are really no big deal because if you play the ocarina enough, you can practice and get used to it. However, whether your ocarina is particularly ergonomic when it comes to chamber switching or not, practice moving your right hand to different chambers. Aim to land on the holes without any air leakage. I'm holding the Imperial City Ocarina for a particular reason because oftentimes when I practice and haven't practiced on this ocarina for a while, Want to jump to the second chamber? One of my fingers is slightly not tight enough, and what should be an E natural with all the fingers covered turns into like an F, kind of, when I should be going. Sometimes it sounds like. Not consistent, not good. Get it right. So a particular exercise you can use to practice landing your fingers accurately from chamber to chamber is different intervals. We're only gonna bother with jumps from the first to second chamber, but here's a quick exercise. We're gonna do a scale from the high C on the first chamber to the high C on the second chamber. And between each note, we will jump back to the C on the first chamber. So if the regular scale is For this exercise, it will be. Something like that. The idea is start getting used to prepping a note on the second chamber with your right hand while you are playing a note on the first chamber with your left hand. So the exercise is going C, D, C, E, C, F, C, G, C, A, C, B, C, C. And then we'll do something a little bit more simple from the opposite direction going downward. So we'll start with the A on the second chamber and we'll do fifths downward until we get back down to the low A or I guess the high A of the first chamber. So A, A, that's the range of it. So that one is a bit harder because we're playing actual perfect fifths going downward. I think it might be a fourth downward. Check my music theory knowledge on that. If you are a music degree, mention it in the comments if I got that wrong. Anyways, you're going from A to D to G to C to F to B flat. The B flat is the hard one because you do have to move your right hand to cover the third finger on the first chamber 
to play the B flat correctly. And then you have to jump back to play the E on the second chamber and then go down to the A on the first chamber. To be able to play smooth transitions between chambers when you're playing a multi-chamber ocarina, you need to prep the notes on one chamber while you're playing another chamber, at least mentally. And a good way to be able to build that muscle memory is to play similar intervals to what I've discussed. Practice doing fifths downward as well as doing a scale upward. These exercises are less like scientifically backed music practice methods and more so examples of things that I've encountered in songs that I've played that have tripped me up and these are the types of things that I've practiced to be able to overcome them. So to put everything for chamber switching together, first when it comes to the mouth side, move the ocarina, not your head. Your head will move a little bit for micro adjustments of your embouchure, but focus on moving the ocarina itself when you're switching chambers. Two, if needed, keep it smooth with chapstick or licking your lips, if you need it. Three, maintain your embouchure and a narrow flow of breath so you don't have any air leakage between chambers. Four, Practice landing your fingers from one chamber to the other when you're switching. So going from the first chamber to the second chamber, second to the third chamber. And five, start getting used to preparing notes in the next chamber with your off hand. So if you're using your right hand to play the second chamber or the third chamber, sometimes practice getting fingerings with your left hand ready to jump down. Alternatively, if you're playing with your left hand at the top of the first chamber, sometimes prepare getting notes ready with your right hand for intervals on the second chamber. We've covered the absolute most important things as it comes to getting used to chamber switching, but something that you really need to keep in mind is chromatic notes in the second chamber and onward. When you reach a certain level of ocarina proficiency, playing chromatic notes on your typical scale comes naturally. But what about the chromatic scale for your second chamber? If you're at this E and you're lost, I don't blame you. However, if you want to be competent playing multi-chamber ocarinas, you also need to learn the sharps and flats on your second and third chambers too. It's also worth noting that different multi-chamber ocarina makers do slightly different fingerings for their different chambers. For example, on the Imperial City triple bass, there is a sub hole on the second chamber that goes to there. That gives you more options for playing your sharps and flats on the second chamber. You have more standard fingerings. However, on the non-standard end, the Songbird Harmony Triple 1 does not have sub holes and 2 does not have nearly as standard fingerings because the notes that are coming out of each chamber are also not standard as multi-chamber ocarinas go. The second chamber starts on a C, whereas most multi-chamber ocarinas have their second chamber start on an E. The third chamber starts on a G, whereas most triple ocarinas have their third chamber start on a D. The chromatic fingerings on these two ocarinas are very different, and this is all to say that on whichever multi-chamber ocarina that you end up getting, Learn how to play the chromatic scale and all chromatic notes on your additional chambers and learn it by heart because you will need to play chromatic notes. Not every song is in the key of C major, so you got to learn. Even I am guilty about not practicing chromatic notes enough on the additional chambers of my multi-chamber ocarinas. So be better than me. Next, you should also learn how to play some notes simultaneously on your multi-chamber ocarina. In most cases, multi-chamber ocarinas are strictly for range extension but because there are multiple mouthpieces, no matter how the multi-chamber ocarina is particularly built, you can play notes at the same time even if it's not necessarily advised. So you should learn how to play at least some of them. While for most standard multi-chamber ocarinas, playing notes at the same time is not particularly useful, if you do choose to do so, here are some things that you can do to help get more comfortable playing them. First, remember that if you're blowing into two chambers simultaneously, you need to blow a lot extra to support two chambers simultaneously. So I'm just gonna play a C and an E separately. And then use the breath pressure for just one of them to try to play both of them. 
very, very flat on that harmony, disharmony note. So if I'm playing both the C and the E at the same time, you do need a lot of extra air to support both chambers simultaneously. So remember that if you ever do play harmonies, you cannot just haphazardly use a standard amount of air for one note to play two notes, or one ocarina to play two ocarinas. Second, spend some time learning some basic music theory about how to form major, minor, and fifth chords. At least, major and minor thirds. This is obviously easiest on harmony oriented ocarinas like the songbird harmony triple where harmony is literally part of the design. However, here are some good harmonies for a more standard multi-chamber ocarina like the Imperial City bass C. First we have C plus E which is a C major third. Next we have E flat and G which is an E flat major third. Next, there's D and F, which is a D minor third. And last, we have C and G, which is a C fifth. However, despite giving those examples, most multi-chamber ocarinas are mainly designed for range extension and therefore they will probably not be perfectly balanced for playing two notes at the same time, so do be warned you might not have the same results as I do. The sixth and final skill you can work on to get better with multi-chamber ocarinas is quite literally physical wrist strength. Some multi-chamber ocarinas, especially bass multi-chamber ocarinas, can be very, very heavy, and you'll notice it after more than a 20 to 30 minute practice session. If you go to the gym at all, you're probably fine. And if you've been playing multi-chamber ocarinas for many months, you're also probably fine. However, if you do find that your wrists or arms do get tired from playing multi-chamber ocarinas, especially bass multi-chamber ocarinas for extended playing sessions, I have some exercises that can help you train your wrist strength to play longer. This is something particularly important to me because I do have relatively sensitive wrists, unfortunate for an ocarina player, and that's why in my ocarina reviews I so frequently talk about ergonomics of holding the instrument. Alright, we got our dumbbells. So no matter how strong you are, you probably only need at most 5 to 7 pounds. If you don't go to the gym, I would recommend literally one, maybe two or three pounds in your dumbbells for this. So the exercise is literally extend your arms straight outward and tilt your wrists down, tilt them up, tilt them down, tilt them up. One repetition is doing down and up. So do three sets of 10. So down one, down two, down three, down four, down five, down six, down seven, down eight, down nine, down 10. Do three sets of that every day for a couple weeks and your wrist strength will be a lot, a lot better for holding your three pound triple ocarina. As someone who has injured their wrists before, use less weight than you think you need. You'll get a far better workout than you think you can get, so don't be overconfident. I can bench 235 pounds. I use five pounds for that workout. So really use only a tiny bit of weight and just focus on the wrist Flexing. Another thing to note is that I did not lock my elbows. I had them at a slight bend, like about 90% straight, if that. I'm not a personal trainer. Do not take this advice as actual personal training. And I will link to an actual personal trainer in the video who has a list of wrist exercises. If you do want to strengthen your wrists, if you find that playing your heavy ocarinas does get you exhausted after 20 to 30 minutes. That said, unless you're playing a bass ocarina or bigger, you will probably not encounter wrist strength issues. This video has taken longer than anticipated to record. Oops. But I'll get to finish my beer soon. Multi-chamber ocarinas are certainly a leap in difficulty over your typical 12 hole counterparts. However, if you develop focused breath, smooth transitions between chambers with both your mouth and your hands, practice your chromatic notes, learn some basic harmony chords, and strengthen your wrists 
exists to be a buff ocarina boy or girl or non-binary friend, you'll be a pro in no time. For more multi-chamber ocarina education, check out my video on different types of non-standard multi-chamber ocarinas. The advice in this video is primarily for standard multi-chamber ocarinas, but there are many varieties of instruments when it comes to multi-chamber ocarinas. However, most of what I've said does apply to all varieties. Thank you to my patrons, especially my $5 tier patron Joshua. You can support me for as little as $1 a month on patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. Help fund ocarina education. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, comment any additional multi-chamber ocarina questions you may have, and I'll see you next time. Happy tootin'. Oh gosh, my hair has gotten more and more disheveled as this video has gone by. This is what I get for recording a video at 10 p.m. Oops.